Let me start by uh, sharing with you Monica's story. Monica came to our office a few years ago because she didn't like her smile. And when we look at her teeth, her teeth actually look good to me. And as orthodontists, we get patients with crooked teeth, and our job is to straighten them out. And with that, we solve most of the problems. But she was not happy with her smile. So at that point, we started questioning there are more to the smile than just the alignment of the teeth. And today, I would like to cover three ideas. First, what do we look at and what you should look at to decide whether a smile is attractive? The second one is what happens to the smile with aging, with time. And the third one is what could you do to enhance your smile or to maintain your smile. Two years later, we were able to get this result for Monica. And uh, I will explain to you how we did this too and uh, what is the process to do that. Before that, I would like to go over a few statistical facts about smiling. The first one is that kids smile much more than adults. Kids smile almost 400 times a day. Adults smile less than 100, and women smile much more than men. Some men only smile 20 times a day. <laughs> There's an exception, because the DMV ladies, they smile minus 80 times <laughs> a day. <laughs> the second interesting fact about smiling is that the smile is considered the most important element when it comes to attractiveness between genders. So people rank the smile higher than they rank the hair, the figure, the eyes, and the skin. And on my take, even if you have nice hair, nice build, nice eyes, nice skin, have horrible teeth, you don't, you're not there. So 55% of the people out of 1,000, uh, keep in mind that was done by the American Dental Association, so they, they are looking <laughs> towards the smile. But still, if you look at studies that were not made, were not done by the American Dental Association, they also have the smile ranks really, really high. Here's another important one. This is an actual scientific study. If you do something wrong and you get caught and you smile about it, the consequences are much less severe. <laughs> now, for those men that only smile 20 times a day, that's where you need to use it. <laughs> one more, and this is another scientific study. They had an attractive woman in a bar and she would establish eye contact with men. To some of these men, she would smile. To some other men, she would not smile. To the men that she smiled towards them, 60% of them would approach her. To the men that she didn't smile, only 20% would approach. So girls, if you smile, you have three times more chances of him coming towards you. The bad thing about this is 20% of men will come anyway if you don't want them to come. <laughs> Last one. We have two types of smiles. I mean, you can classify a smile based on different criteria, but mainly you have two types of smile. We have one that we call the emotional smile, and the one, we have one that we call the pose smile. The pose smile is the one you perform when they ask you for a photo. So you say photo, everybody smiles, say cheese, that's one type of smile. It's in a smile that you can make on demand. The other one, it's more related to emotion or to the part of your brain that decides to control the muscles of the face when you laugh. And this is different, the two of them. And you can see that in the movements of the eyes, and you can see them in the way the lips curl. Uh, in any case, the people that can perform their social smile very, very similar to their spontaneous smile, these are the people that are the most photogenic ones. Now, this is trainable. So a lot of people that are on TV or models, they, they sit in front of the mirror and they try to achieve the same spontaneous smile on the man when they do that. OK, so now what is the most important thing that we look at when we look at the smile? We look at how much of your tooth you show. Well, either you have your lips at rest, or your lips are relaxed, or when you're smiling. We call it tooth exposure. So I'm going to use the word tooth exposure for the rest of the lecture. And the way I want you to look at it, it's with this analogy. Think about a painting. So the frame of the paintings are the lips. The matting of the painting are the gums. And the actual painting are the teeth. So for, for me, for each time I'm going to describe a smile, I'm going to use this analogy. So 
Let's say what is normal in this case. How much tooth do you need to show when you smile? And people that look at their own photos, they can evaluate that, or you can look at your partner that's sitting, your neighbor, to see how much tooth they show when they smile. Normal is considered to show your full tooth, your full upper tooth, up to two or three millimeters of gum, it's still considered attractive. They did studies, and if you look at that line of photos, those photos have been photoshopped to show more gum or less gum, depending if you go up and down on the line. And they showed it to different raters. And the raters decided that if you show your entire tooth, it's attractive. You can show up to two or three millimeters of gum, and it's still attractive during smile. Now let's look at when you lip at rest. When you lip at rest, the normal is to show maybe four or five millimeters at age 20. And then every 10 years, we lose one millimeter of tooth exposure. Uh, and that's one of the consequences of aging. And if you look at the lip, the lip lengthens, the lip sags with age because the fibers of the lip lose the elasticity and the lip comes to a lower position in the face, making you show less tooth when your lips are at rest. That's why when you talk to older people, you can see how they show you their bottom teeth. And when you're young, you can still show mostly the upper tooth. Okay, here's an example. <laughs> this is Brigitte Bardot. Brigitte Bardot at age 20, one of the most beautiful women in history, and you can see the curl of the lip, and you can see how the lip with age, a little bit over 20 on, on the left side, uh, lengthens, and now she's showing the lower incisor. This is the effect of gravity and loss of elasticity on the soft tissue. Unfortunately, this is not only uh, exclusive to the lips. Uh, it happens in other parts of the body. <laughs> We think also that the amount of tooth that you show, the amount of tooth that you show when you lip at rest has also other type of implications. Because we say that it's good to show four or five millimeters of tooth while you are speaking or while your lips are at rest. So who do you think won the elections that time? <laughs> and then the Republicans, they learned a lesson, so they brought another one, but still, not enough. He's still showing the bottom teeth. OK, let me show you a few examples of what we do in the clinic. This patient has been in orthodontic treatment for four years. And that was the final result for her. And if you look at her teeth, her teeth are aligned. The problem, her teeth are not in the right position in the face. They should be farther down. If you look at the analogy with the paintings, if the upper painting is normal, the bottom painting is how the teeth are. We're looking down. The teeth should come down so we can see the whole thing. And she only gave me one year to fix it. And what we needed to do is we needed to pull the teeth down as fast as we can, and we end up from this result to that result in one year. Now the teeth are in the middle of the frame. Now you can see the full tooth when the patient smiles. At the same time, what we did is we increased the amount of tooth that she shows when she, her lips are at rest, making her looks younger. So the picture on the left, she's a year older, but she actually looks much younger because now she shows tooth when the lip is at rest. Let me show you quickly two more cases. We've seen this case in, in the beginning. In this case, it's the opposite. In this case, the patient shows too much tooth and too much gum when she smiles. So if you look at the analogy of the photo, again, the teeth are too far down in the face, and the gums are too far down in the face. So we're going to push the teeth up, and then we're going to bring the gums up. And we went, you've seen already the result, we went from this type of smile to that type of smile. Now she shows the entire tooth with maybe two millimeters of uh, gum on top of the tooth. This is another case. This is even more severe. In this case, the teeth are showing too much tooth, too much gum, and everything is crooked to the side. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to push the teeth up in the face, and we're going to establish the symmetry and expand. And this is done in orthodontics. We're combining with other procedures I'll talk to you about later. But in this case, what we have is that the picture is down and to the side, and we're going to push it up, and we're going to center it. And in this case, at the same time, we are normalizing how much tooth she shows uh, with the lips at our rest. So take home message. Things you should avoid. First one, avoid anything that's going to shorten your upper teeth. Don't let the dentist grind on your upper tooth. Don't let him polish him. And don't let the orthodontist push the tooth up under the lip, because the age is going to take care of that anyway. So the longer and the, the, the farther down your tooth is, it's the better. It's going to make you look younger. The second thing is avoid any lip enhancement procedures that will lengthen the upper lip. 
Sometimes they put fillers in the lip, sometimes they put grafts in the lip, and what happens is the lip looks thicker, but it comes to a lower position in the face. So the lip itself looks younger, but the face looks older because now the lip is covering too much of your upper tooth. I didn't have time to talk about that, but don't use Botox around the mouth because the, the, the wrinkles that you have around the mouth are functional wrinkles, and these are not treated with Botox. They are treated with fillers, and fillers can make a very good job. Botox, it reduces your expression of your face, and on top of that, it, it's not the right treatment for wrinkles around the mouth. Botox is really good for your forehead or maybe for the corners of the eye. Don't use Botox around your mouth. And finally, always consult with your orthodontist because they are the, smi the smile specialists. They are the ones that look at everything around your smile, lips, gums, and smile. What are your options? As orthodontists, we love to see people in braces on TV. and We think it's very cute. But the problem is that today's connotation of an adult or a late teenager with braces, braces, this is what they think about them. So what are your options? You actually have three options. You can use clear braces, which are still visible but discreet. You can use hidden braces, where braces are placed behind the teeth or lingual braces. Nobody can see them. They're completely invisible. There's a lot of people on TV that you see regularly, and they have braces behind their teeth. And I know them because we treat them. And also Invisalign, which is another invisible option for you. I'd like to dedicate this lecture to my parents that are in Barcelona. They would have loved to come here, Ruti and Julio. And finally, I will challenge you to decide whether the patients that you're going to see in the next photo, at the time that the photo was acquired, whether they have braces or not. Thank you very much.